Y'all say, I, I said, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Let's do it. Y'all know, I don't know this panic cake. Y'all got an extra hour of sleep. How much more sleep do you want? My goodness. We had an amazing time of uh, prayer last night, a, a night of engaging with the presence of God, a night of just being in his presence. Because the worship is in his presence, there's fullness of joy. And, and I tell you that we, we as, as the body of Christ, no matter your race, creed, color, or what titles outside of your church name, you need to stay in the place of prayer. Stay in the place of prayer. So I'm going to talk to this, I'm going to talk to you this morning about stay in the place of prayer. Stay in the place of prayer. Meaning you talking to God, not just saying my name is Jimmy, gimme, gimme, gimme. No, you talking to God, allowing God to talk to you, hearing God, doing what he leads you to do in a practical way. If he puts it upon your heart to call somebody, to call somebody. If he puts it upon your heart to check on somebody, to check on somebody. If he puts it upon your heart to bless somebody, whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to do. We want to be met. We want to work with God. Amen. 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 We want to, we want to be co-laborers with God. So I want to encourage you and exhort you this morning, Sister Jackie, to stay in the place of prayer. Amen. And I'm going to go to a very familiar passage of scripture, and I'm just going to share the word of God. I'm going to read to you from Luke, the 18th chapter. And it was already confirmed in our time of prayer. Pastor Beverly was already quoting the scripture. I was like, you all in my message. Amen. But the Holy Spirit confirms and builds. Amen. Amen. Luke 18 and 1, Luke 18, verse 1 from the New Living Translation. I want us to listen to it today like we've never heard it before. Amen. Because sometimes we read things and we hear scripture. Oh, I heard that. I know that. We don't even open our Bibles. Y'all not saying that. Oh, I heard that before. Oh, I heard that. No, act like you've never heard it before. Because just because you heard it doesn't mean you're doing it. Amen. Amen. Good morning over here in the corner. Amen. Just because you heard it doesn't mean you're doing it. He didn't say blessed are the hearers of the word. Come on. But he said blessed are the doers of the word. Amen. It's not what we hear. It's what we do. Amen. Luke 18 and 1 from the New Living Translation. It says one day Jesus told his disciples a story. To show what, he, what was he trying to show them? One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. Amen. I can close right there. Yes. So he's laying a format. He's making it plain. He's not. He's not. Uh, it's not confusing what Jesus is trying to get over to us, Sister Carol. What he's saying here is, this, one day. Jesus told his disciples, he was talking to his disciples, he told them a story, he was giving them a message. Yeah. What was the message? What was the story? The story was to show that they should always pray yes. and never give up. Never. So if, if he was telling them not to give up, Pastor Mark, he, he knew that challenges were going to come and tests were going to come and things were going to come in your life. Things will come to come in your ministry. Things will come in your family. People will come against you where you will want to give up. Say, Jesus is setting the stage. One day, Jesus told the disciples to start to show that they should always pray and never give up. If we as believers should always pray, that means that we should always be sitting under and in ministries and churches that pray. Y'all got quiet. Not sit around and have anniversaries. God bless you, sister. God bless you. Not, not sitting around having anniversaries. Not sitting around having social events. Not sitting around and, and talking about what we're going to do next week. But we should gather together to pray. Amen. One day, told disciples story to show that they should always pray and never give up. Yes. There was a judge in a certain city. He, sa he said, who never feared God or cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while. But finally he said to himself, if I don't, uh, he said, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. Are the prayers that you pray and your constant requests before God, are they driving God crazy? Come on, come on. Or do we just pray one time and let it go? No. Amen. A widow of that city came to repent and said, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally, say finally, finally. He said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is worrying me out with her constant requests. She's worrying me out because she keeps coming to me, and if I don't give in to her, she's going to wear me out. Amen. I want to ask you, are you wearing God out this morning with your prayers? 
Are you wearing God out with your request? Are you coming to God? And I don't mean you have to pray and ask God for the same thing over and over again, but the thing that you're believing God for, are you coming back saying, Lord, I thank you for this one's salvation. I thank you for that one's salvation. I thank you that I'm getting better and better and stronger and stronger each day. Amen. Are we constantly going to God? Are we going to the throne or are we going to the phone? Uh, Hallelujah. All right. Glory to God. Yes. He said, this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she's wearing me out with her constant request. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson. Uh, mm, mm. If the Lord says, learn a lesson, you better perk your ears up. Amen. If the Lord says, learn a lesson, you better get off Facebook and get in his book. Amen. If the Lord says, learn a lesson, you better take heed. Say, take heed. Take heed. There's not many times in scripture where the word says, learn, take heed, learn a lesson. That means he's trying to get something over to us. Yes. You say, well, Pastor Mark, everything's going good right now. I don't really need to spend much time in prayer. But let me tell you something. Challenges come every day. Mm -hmm. come on. Things come every day. You need, yes. to, you need to store up some prayers. Yes. Come on. The old mother just say, store up timber. Yes. Y'all not saying nothing. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. So he said, then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. He didn't say learn a lesson from this spirit-filled prophet of God. He didn't say learn a lesson from this person who's been laying before me day and night, night and day, in constant prayer and sackcloth and ashes and fasting. He said learn a lesson from this unjust judge. That means God teaches us lessons. He'll use an unbeliever. He'll use an atheist to teach us a lesson. Y'all not saying nothing this morning. Hey Amen. I'm glad y'all in the house. That makes me glad. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Amen. And that's another lesson. We can learn from anybody. We can learn from the unbelievers. We can learn. Let me tell you something. A lot of the unbelievers learn from us. A lot of them put a lot of these principles in actions and they reap the benefits of these principles because God's principles work. What you mean, Pastor Mark? A lot of your, your unbelievers and people that are not saved, they're big givers. And they're big sowers. So they reap big harvests because even though they may not be saved, they, the principle of sowing and reaping works. Y'all got quiet again. I'm not trying to take up an offer right now. I'm just talking about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Learn a lesson from this unjust judge. And as spirit-filled believers, as people that believe God, you should be, you should have your ears open at all times. You, On your job, you should have your ears open. You can learn a lesson from somebody that you're working with. You can learn a lesson from your unsafe coworker. You can God can God can use anything and anyone to get a message over to you. Right. To teach you a lesson. Amen. Hallelujah. Learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who pray or cry to him day and night? Amen. Just because you haven't seen it yet, y'all, that doesn't mean God hasn't heard your prayers. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's Just because you haven't walked into manifestation yet doesn't mean God didn't hear your prayers. Uh -huh. Just because your children are not saved yet, everybody say yes. 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 Doesn't mean God hasn't answered your prayers. Yes. Just because you don't have a husband or wife yet doesn't mean that God hasn't heard your prayers. Yes, Amen. God has heard your prayers. Amen. And he's seen your tears yes. and he's going to answer. Amen. Amen. Yes. It says even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? God is not a God to keep putting you off. It may feel like he's putting you off, but let me tell you something. If, if, if he hasn't answered or manifestation hasn't come yet, he's teaching you something. He's teaching you how to trust him in our place. He's teaching you how to trust him when you don't have what you're praying for yet. He's teaching you. He's teaching your hands to war and your fingers to fight. It says, I tell you, he will give, he will grant justice to them quickly. So when the son of man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? Yes. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. I want to give you, as, as we stay in the place of prayer, I want to give you four things that we need to always do. Four things we need to always do as we stay in the place of prayer. Number one, you need to pray. Amen. <laughs> in order to stay in the place of prayer, you got to pray. You can't think prayer. You can't write prayer. You got to pray. You got to commune. You got to talk to God. Why are you talking to God on your job? Why are you talking to God at the gym? Wherever you are, you got to talk to God. You got you got to talk to God and allow Him to talk to you, or sensitize yourself even while you're in your car for God to, to just drop some things in your spirit. Yeah. To drop some people in your in your spirit, you need to call. To drop some people in your spirit, you need to pray for. So drop some people in your, in your heart, you need to cover. So number one, as you stay in the place of prayer, number one, you need to pray. Matthew 6 and 6 it says, but when you pray, 
Go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you in the open. Amen? Amen. God's word transition says, when you pray, go to your room and close the door. Pray privately to your father who is with you. Your father who sees in private, he will reward you openly. Amen? Amen. I love the scripture in James 5, 16. It says, therefore, confess your sins to one another. Listen to this. It says, confess your sins to one another. Your, your false steps, your offenses, and pray one for another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man, a believer, accomplishes much when, when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. Amen? Amen. So number one, the first, as we continue to stay in the place of prayer, number one, we got to pray. Number two, while you pray, you have to have passion. Everybody say passion. Passion. Passion is the power of wanting it. It is desire. How bad do you want it? How bad do you, are you believing God? How bad do you want it? That's good. Amen. Mark 11, 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, everybody shall desire. desire. When you pray, not if you pray, yes. Bonnie, but when you pray, yes. believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Yes. The power is in your passion. Don't lose your passion. This, oh, uh, my sister right here, she was believing God for a long time to move and to get into her own place and to get into a better place. And God has granted that prayer. Amen. Which is a Sabrina, amen. And she's moving, amen. 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 I'm sure she could tell probably a long phase of suffering while she's at the old place. Her eyes, her eyes get big as I'm speaking. <laughs> so it doesn't mean while you're believing God and while you keep passion that you're not going through. It doesn't mean that you don't like the place you're at. But what it is, you don't get up off of it. You're like, I'm not moving until you bless me. I'm not going to stop praying until I get breakthrough. I'm not going to stop praying until I can answer prayer. Because the verse says, if I ask, it shall be given. If I seek, I shall find. If I knock, I shall, the door shall be open. Don't stop asking. Don't stop seeking. And don't stop knocking. I don't care how bad it looks in the natural realm. Hallelujah. You gotta say, devil, I'm not getting off God. I'm not, I'm not being moved by what I see. Absolutely. I'm not being moved by what I hear. I'm gonna stand on God's word and I'm coming out. Start speaking life and prophesying. Say, I'm coming out. Yes. Things are getting better and better, yes. stronger and stronger each day. Yes. My body is getting is better. How yes. you feel? I'm, I'm healed by his stripes in Jesus' name. Yes. Don't make a list of everything that you feel in, in your body. You release that word, and it's hard. I told you before, it's hard to say the raw, the right thing over yourself when the wrong thing is happening. It's hard to say by his stripes I'm healed. When you feel the pain, I get you. It's hard to say I'm prosperous and blessed when your account is in the negative. Come on. Amen. Get down. When them checks that you wrote is having a basketball party, God. <laughs> And them, and them, uh, those fees is racking up and stacking up. Thirty-five dollars. I'm just talking to keeping it real. Yes. It's hard to say the right thing when the wrong thing is happening. Mm -hmm. Jesus. But you got to stand upon God's word. You got to let God stretch you, and you got to be determined. Say, I'm not giving up, devil. I don't care what happens. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm blessed going in and blessed going out. Because let me tell you something. What you confess out of your mouth is going to line up one day. Say it's going to line up. God's going to go before you to make the crooked path straight and the rough place is smooth. And I tell you about the Spirit of God, even for those of you that have a, a problem in your body. I'm telling you, Jesus said, you're going to start waking up and you're going to be like, oh, I, I feel better. When you was limping, you're going to start walking straight. Y'all not saying nothing. When you got up slow, you're going to get up quick and God's going to give you a bounce back. I prophesy that God's going to give you a bounce back. Say, God's going to give me my bounce back. I prophesy energy. I prophesy strength. I prophesy the manifest presence of God to bring healing and wholeness to your body. For he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, and with him by his stripes you're healed. And I don't know who this is for, but I say depression be gone in Jesus' name. I break the power of depression. I break the power of oppression in Jesus' name. Come on, if that's for you, give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. That's some prophetic words that I would get my bounce back. Amen. As we stay in the place of prayer, number three, you have to have patience. Number one is prayer. Number two is passion. Number three is patience. Listen to this. She wore him down because she was patient. I need to sit to that. She went every day. 
He was frustrated, but not her. Right. <laughs> you have to wait it out. Don't give in up. Don't give in or don't give out. Say, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to give out. I was listening to Bishop T.D. Jakes last week, and he was saying how if he was going through a problem or a struggle, if he needed somebody to pray for him, he said, I love the men. He said, because the men will pray, and I love my brothers, and I love my men. He said, but if I really want a prayer to get through, he said, I'm going to call on some women to pray for me. He said, because the women, they're going to keep going. They're going to like, they gonna wear God out. They're gonna, they, they ain't going to pray a little five-minute prayer, but they're going to war with that prayer. They're going to pray. And it was so encouraging, and that's true. The women of God are going to cover you and keep you. When a woman of God has your back, they're going to pray and intercede, and they're going to go to battle for you because that's within them. That's, that's in their nature. To war and to fight for their children. To war and to fight for their families and for those that they love. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The last one I want to give you, the fourth way you have to, uh, rem fourth thing you have to remember as you stay in the place of prayer, number four, is persistence. Persistent people get things that other people don't. Persistent people get things that other people don't. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And it's not just a one-time thing. you got to keep going back. God will reward you for your diligence. Yes. So let me go back over that. I'm going to give you four things to remember as you stay in a place of prayer. I'm going to close. Number one, you got to stay and be a person of prayer. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can't stop praying. And I'm telling you, sometimes things look bad. Things get bad before they get better. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember, you got to be persistent in your prayers. Number two, you have to have passion. It's the power of wanting. How bad do you want to see your kids saved? How bad do you want to walk in all that God has called you to, to do? How bad do you want? How bad do you want to see people's lives blessed? I'm telling you, I want to see people saved, yeah. delivered, set free. I want to see the house packed. I thank God for Sister Brenda. Give Sister Brenda a hand of praise. I met her last week in the hotel. And we prayed in the, we prayed in the, in the, in the front, and she said she's going to come, and she is here today. And I'm telling you, she loves God, but she was ready to have a prayer service in the front of us. I said, yeah, we can't have no prayer going here, but we pray. I want my life to touch someone else's life. I'm not here because I don't have nothing else to do. I'm not doing another service because I'm not, I want to see people's lives change. Every race, every creed, every nation. The Lord says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the followers in heaven. Let me tell you something. I told y'all last time, we don't have no time to waste. No we don't know when we're going to go home to be with the Lord and I want to do what God has called me to do and I don't want to leave the earth premature. Amen. I want to finish my course. The devil is a lie. I want to finish my course and I want to bless people. I want to see people healed, delivered, and set free. Amen. God didn't keep me here to keep me with a closed mouth. I want to cry out and spare not. Amen. You've got a hand of praise. Amen. Number three, as you stay in the place of prayer, number three, you have to be patient. And sometimes you got to be very long-suffering. Long-suffering is long-suffering. you got to suffer long. you got to go through. you got to be patient. you got to see, God, I'm, I'm going to wait on you. Especially when you have worldwide ministry inside of you. You're not seeing worldwide results. I say, okay, Lord, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait on you. And number four, you got to be persistent. Persistent people get things that other people don't. Yes, God. You keep pressing. She was persistent. She's like, I'm not giving up. You don't want to give me justice. You're going to give me some justice because I'm not leaving. I'll spend the night. <laughs> I'll pitch a tent. He knew, he knew she was a little cray-cray. You can know these things. He said, this unjust judge, he said, Let, I better give her what she wants because she and I, she's not easy enough. She's not taking no for an answer. Yeah, that's and that's how we should be with our children. Yeah, that's how we should be with our grandchildren. Yeah, that's how we should be with our ministry. With God. We should say, I'm not giving up. I'm not seeing the results, but devil, I'm not giving up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. My kids may be getting high, but I'm not giving up. Mm. They may come in sloppy drunk, but I'm not giving up. Right. They may say they're atheists, but I'm not giving up. But let me tell you something. God knows how to draw your kids to the Lord. Yes, Amen. Amen. I'm done. Let's give God a hand of praise and stay in the place of prayer. God bless you.